Welcome back. In this video, I'll teach you everything that you need to know about kidney stones. The most common presentation of kidney stones is renal colic, which means that there is a fluctuating pain that is often very severe and irradiates to the groin area. The patient will say that the pain is in the flank area of the abdomen and that they also feel the same pain in the groin area. This is most commonly unilateral, unless the patient is very unlucky and they have bilateral stones in both kidneys. It can be associated with hematuria. As the stone goes down the ureter, it can injure the walls and cause some minor bleeding and will cause also nausea and vomiting. This is because of the severe pain. And if left untreated for some time, it will cause sepsis and infection. There are many different types of stones and some of them have diff different presentation. The most common type of stone is calcium-based stone or calcium oxalate. And this accounts for up to 80% of the cases. The most common risk factor is of course increased calcium in the blood as this excess calcium will deposit in the kidneys and cause these stones. The other type is uric acid and these small stones are almost needle shape like and they can be invisible in x-rays. So they are sometimes harder to detect. Some unlucky patients might have an autosomal recessive disease known as cysteinuria, and this presents with cysteine stone. And if the patient is really unlucky, they can have certain bacteria in their urine, like proteus bacteria, for example. And these special bacteria can eat or metabolize the urine and its content and produce these trovile stones. Strovile stones are very difficult to treat and they often require surgery. Normally the stone forms in the pelvis and it goes down the ureter and out the bladder. The most common location where the stone gets stuck and causes obstruction symptoms is the ureterovesicular junction. This is the narrowest area and stones often get stuck here. And of course this will cause backup pressure and will cause dilatation of the ureter as well as the kidneys. And eventually, if untreated, it will cause infection, which we name pyelonephritis. The investigation that you need to order include a urine dipstick, blood CBC and chemistry, abdominal plane x-ray, abdominal ultrasound, and if you're still unsure and you need to do more investigations, you can do a non-contrasted CTKUB. If you want to give the patient some analgesia, avoid giving opioids, as they might exacerbate the pain. Instead, give them diclofenac or other NSAIDs. IV paracetamol can also be given. And if they have some vomiting, you can give, the, you can give them medical bromide. Antibiotics can also be given if you suspect an infection. For most cases, by simply giving analgesia and letting the patient rest with plenty of fluids, the stone will pass by itself. In fact, this is the case for most of the patients, more than half of them. Sometimes we can use an ultrasonic device which produces high frequency wave that can break the stone from the outside. This is known as the extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy. And here's a small quiz. Which of the following medications increases calcium in the blood? And here is the answer. Alright guys, that's all I have and thank you so much for watching.